before they filter in here. Um, so if you all can um, leave your name and where you're from in the chat. Um, that's always fun to see where people are from. And um, also, if you want to leave um, a, mm -hmm. uh, uh, whatever your favorite COVID pastime has been, you know, while, while we've been in lockdown, what, what, what's, what's been your hobby? What's been your, your way that you've spent your time as a little icebreaker? From the state of misery. <laughs> I, I think all red states feel like that right now. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I have to say that that my COVID pastime has been um, uh, fostering things, people, animals. <laughs> Indeed, people and animals. Yeah. Good to know, Lori. I'm coming over. Come on, hey, I got two I can give you right now. <laughs> no, I'm talking I'm about her in that past me. Time. Okay, come on. Come on over. Okay. <laughs> I even brought the cute one because she says one of my kittens is ugly. I should have an invite to Virginia, which is my first place to the Canadian border. So we're highly considering that to get the hell out of Texas at this point. So. I need to find me the schedule, but then I'm going to go call him. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, get schedule, I'm gonna if you're not him. talking, if you don't mind going ahead and putting yourself on mute, that way we won't get a lot of background noise. And we are actually um, live streaming this to our new Facebook group today. Um, and so if you are on Facebook, which I realize a lot of people aren't, but it's okay if, if you are, um, we are expanding our. <laughs> um infrastructure over to facebook uh we've dabbled in it a little bit um prior to now but um unfortunately or for i don't know which way but there's a lot of misinformation on facebook and um pretty much um as far as paid spending on facebook the right tram tramples us every time it's la times that's who it is Answer. He call me on the cell phone. Um, so. It's a particular democracy update call. This is a good. He may not respond at all. If uh, if everybody could everybody could mute if you're not uh, not talking. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, and we will give you opportunity for sure. Yeah. Um, so um, there's a lot of misinformation as well as just um, straight. Um, unanswered um, stuff from the right on Facebook. And so uh, we know that it's important for us to have a presence there um, as well. So we'll talk a little bit more about that at, at the end of this call. All right. Okay. Uh, well, the, uh, one of the first, we'll, let's go ahead and kick it off. One of the first thing, and thanks for everybody for leaving your, your name, where you're from and uh, what your favorite COVID pastime has been in the in the chat there while we while we get going. Um, first thing we wanted to show everybody was, and I'll drop it in the chat here, um, a new um, page on our website. Uh, that's our our new calendar. Um, we're hoping that this will be really help, helpful for people uh, who are trying to um, figure out what's happening on any given day in the Dimcast universe. Um, so we're going to have, um, we're going to have, uh, these calls are listed on, on there. Um, the, um, any, any tweet storms or social media um, efforts that we're, that we're doing as a, as a coalition uh, are, are going to be on there. We'll include, um, you know, important, maybe if, if you're looking for phone banking or text banking opportunities, um, you know, we'll try and include some of those on there as well, um, just so that people can, um, you know, plug into uh, things with partners that, that, uh, that we're working with. So, um, you know, just bookmark that page. Um, we'll, we'll, um, 
we'll try and keep uh, uh, reminding everybody about it for a while until <laughs> until everybody knows it's there. Um, and uh, if you have a suggestion for an event um, that that uh, you know that say there's something critical happening in your state and and you're you know there's an important uh, national phone banking or tax banking uh, um, activity that people could pop into you can always email that to us or, or direct message us. Um, and, uh, and we'll, no, no promises that we'll put it on. It kind of depends on on, a, on on any given day, um, uh, how many things are already listed on a on a day because we don't want to overwhelm folks or or clog up the calendar. But um, but if we, if there's space and if it makes sense, we can we can potentially put it up there. So I did add a call from Indivisible um, Marin, who's actually doing a call Friday on the filibuster, mm -hmm. since that is. Um, always a very hot topic <laughs> i saw that yeah so and and for for some reason when you're looking at the calendar view it starts on monday and goes through sunday so i'm, tr I'm trying to figure out how to fix that uh but just so you know when you're looking at it the column all the way on the left is monday okay um uh am i handing it off to jamie now yeah um, so I don't know how many of you saw the video from uh, Leader Schumer, um, but they did drop the new Mansion Plus build today. Um, we are expecting to get text of the actual bill by Wednesday. The first vote on this new bill will be early next week. Um, this is moving very, very quickly. Um, and so... It could be as early as Monday or Tuesday. Um, and to go along with that, again, we are expecting Republicans to block it. Um, so we wanna make sure that we're pushing back on the mainstream media narrative, which we know they will do. Um, the bill is dead. It's not dead. Um, everyone thinks it will probably take about two times getting this bill up for a vote um, before the mansions, the uh, cinema's cave on the filibuster. Um, no one thinks that they will eliminate the filibuster. Um, there is a consensus though, among the groups that have been working with cinema and mansion that they are going to reform the filibuster so they can say, we didn't eliminate it. We, we strengthen the filibuster. Um, and especially the people in West Valley or West Virginia, they don't believe mansion would be doing all of this and not pass the bill. He's literally putting his reputation on the line for this. Um, but to get this going, um, we are doing a tweet at your senators tonight um, with finish the job. Um, this tool allows you to tweet directly to both your senators um, and we also have Joe Biden on there just to kind of encourage him to really speak up about this and put that pressure. Um, so I think we have like 12 people that have tweeted. So I'd love, or we have 17. So I'd love to see if we can get to that hundred mark by the end of this call tonight and really start putting the pressure on. Um, and tomorrow the Declaration for American Democracy is going to be doing a big rally in front of the Senate. Um, I think it's at noon Eastern to finish the job. So hopefully there'll be a lot of press. Search that hashtag tomorrow. Amplify it. Um, so, and then a couple of things that we've heard about the version of this new bill. Um, is that it was specifically crafted to guard against SCOTUS knocking down the bill. Um, so every little single part of this bill has a severability clause in it that if for some reasons, reason SCOTUS strikes down that particular part, the rest of it is intact. Um, and they have really tried to ground the wording in Congress's authority to pass elections. 
so that SCOTUS cannot try to get this at a later date. So, so I think, I, I think, um, yeah, yeah. So Trudy asked in the chat. So just to be clear, once it's blocked one time, then uh, it'll come back up again in sh fairly short order. But this time, hopefully, it'll be uh, that that there will be an in intervening uh, action taken by the Senate to change the filibuster rules so that they can actually pass it the second time. Well, what we're thinking is after the second time it's blocked, um, the next vote would be to reform the filibuster. After um, the second time, so wait, they'll do, because it's already been blocked votes. once. There'll yeah, be two they'll votes. probably do two more votes on this. Oh, okay. Um, and then change the filibuster. The two most likely reforms that we're hearing is going straight to a talking filibuster where somebody has to hold the floor. Um, the biggest drawback of that is it actually stops all Senate business. So there could be no confirmations on judges, cabinet members, no committee meetings, nothing else goes on other than them holding the floor. Um, the but, other most- But the benefit of that obviously yeah. is you have to stand up there and explain why you're trying to stop people from getting access to the ballot, yeah. <laughs> which, um, which isn't a good look if you're doing it yeah. for an extended um, period of time. Or the second one is to put it on the minority. So 41 members of the minority would have to be on the floor to block a bill. Um, so that is the second most, um, and really the whole idea that groups have been working it with on Mansion is to kind of revitalize the old Senate rules that guarantee the minority can have a say, but not a veto. Um, and it's also to create an incentive to negotiate and compromise. Um, you know, the threat of the filibuster should be painful and time consuming, you know, so that the majority wants to avoid it um, and there's a viable path to break it. So the minority has reason to come to the table. So really changing the filibuster would actually could be a breakthrough on for the Senate on actually getting things done because it would force the minority party to actually come to the table and negotiate. Hallelujah. Yeah. Um, so any, any questions on what we know so far about this new bill? We, we were hoping that we would have the, the language of the bill in hand by the time this call happened. Um, we don't know the name of the bill. Um, they're calling it the Mansion Plus bill, <laughs> um, but that's, I'm sure, just short shorthand. Um, yeah, I mean, what we're hearing in it is it's very heavy on voter access, um, that it will end partisan gerrymandering for congressional races. It does have provisions to get dark money out of politics, um, which was a little bit surprising that that sounds like that's going to be in there. Um, and it will also have some election security feature um, requiring that all ballots have a paper trail and that each precinct county has to do a statistical audit to ensure the accuracy of the vote. Um, so some of the stuff that's in there could be really hard for the Republicans to vote against. So, um, and yes, there will probably be they a voter anyway. ID. Yeah. <laughs> I they're mean, also, against the child tax credit. So if you yeah. can't vote for kids, yeah. who are you going to vote for, right? There will probably be a voter ID in there. Um, the thing to remember on that is it will actually increase access in 36 states. Um, so it will standardize the list that voters can use to vote on, but it will also include provisions. Um, so, that if you don't have one of A, B, or C, you can use, you know, DEF. So it it sounds like the list would be something that over 99% of people would have. Yeah. So it increases the list of documents that you can bring with you to prove your identity. And it includes things like, you know, uh, college IDs and, and that kind of stuff, which a lot of in, in a lot of states uh, 
the the list is more restrictive than what's going to be in the bill. So a, a little bit of a compromise on that, I think. From um, and I think we just have to try and message it well when when we finally figure out what's in it. Because um, some people will say like voter ID, what? Uh, but but actually, it's it's going to be an improvement for the vast bulk of states. So and. A lot of the people with the DFAD coalition that are policy experts are waiting for this to come out. Um, so there is a team ready to go over this with fine tooth comb um, to put in the major talking points. And so as soon as we know it's in the bill, we will have a social media kit um, that we can get out and share it. So, you know, and, and maybe Jamie, we could maybe we should do like a, after we really understand what's in it, we could do just a impromptu call that we could record yeah. um, and invite people to join, but we can send out the link afterwards and um, just to provide advice about how to talk about all the different pieces. Trudy has a question. Um, Trudy, if you want to unmute and ask your question. Yes, Jamie, do we know if on the carve out of the filibuster, they're considering making it like reconciliation since it's voting rights, that they can go ahead and vote on it without the filibuster? And it's a possibility. A, so that's still there. Okay, that's thank you. still there. It would basically be a democracy carve out. Um, ah, and very good. Yeah, and when what we're hearing is that when they decide to move on the filibuster rules, there will be no notice given to anybody so that the right wing um, media cannot jump ahead of it, that it will just be called up. Um, that we've heard that they are not going to notify anybody. So um, Good. no Thank preparation you. for us, but- Is that, is that, is that strategy? <laughs> No, strategy. <laughs> there is strategy. So, I mean, who knows? There could be leaks, but. Um... All right. Here's, okay. here's a little update. We've had 36 um, supporters tweet out from the uh, tweet storm. So, if you haven't had a chance to do that, and of course, you have a Twitter, um, please make sure that you click on the link there. Um, and I just jumped it again in chat and let, let's, let's call at whether they're blue or red, we still need to let them know what we think. Even if you're and there's like different me, messages for red and blue senators. Um, but if you're, if you're like me, when you know that they're absolutely not for democracy, you still have to do it. Yeah. So. Yeah, so we have a couple of questions. Um, we have one it, asking if like the NAACP, Black Voters Matter, Poor People's Party are all coalition members. Yes, they are, um, as well as Fair Fight. Um, so they are all members. Um, they're frequently on these calls. Um, and then another question is, when do we think the vote will happen? Will it be on the same day or a different day? We don't know. Um, I mean, one possibility is they they block it and Schumer immediately calls for filibuster reform. Um, I would think the telltale sign is if you see um, Vice President Harris in the House. You see Vice President Harris in the Senate, um, be watching really closely that day. <laughs> All right. Great. Uh, we have a we have many more things to discuss. So uh, um, I got a quick question for Jane. Uh -huh. yeah. In the um, bill, you were talking about dark money and stuff like that being surprisingly being being uh, in there. Do we think that some of that is in there purposely to take out to give man to give Mansion and Cinema cover? We don't know. Um, cinema has not been involved in this um, at all. It has yeah, been um, Manchin, Pester, Coons, Kane, Warnock, Merkley, Klobuchar, and Padilla. 
but um, but you know what what you say makes sense right, uh, yeah. I, I think to that's totally feasible that like oh yeah okay we're gonna try and pass it one more time uh it didn't pass can't get the republicans let's try and knock one of these things out they take that part out they try again uh, that that would make a lot of sense also it might be just to scare the republicans that wow they're getting close to um passing this and eliminating dark money um you know that that might get enough of them to say okay well if you'll if you'll join we'll drop that component out mm -hmm. also so yeah it does not i don't believe it has a public financing option um and i don't believe it has the ethics mm -hmm. but again we don't know um it, it really does sound like it has 80 percent of what we want um uh, we don't know, Omer. Um, he asked if there's any provision to give felons a right to vote. Um, we don't know. Hey, we got a, a brand new person to Dimcast on the call today who doesn't know who we are or what we do. Nick, give him the 30 second spill. <laughs> good. Um, so, good, uh, you know, I should always do this at the beginning. So, this is a nice reminder. Uh, so, Demcast is a 501c4 nonprofit organization. Uh, our mission is to help lift the voices of grassroots activists in the digital space to try and uh, try and win the narrative, uh, which uh, the right is um, way ahead of us in in uh, on on online and on social networks. Uh, you know, we try and create opportunities for people to uh, share strategic messaging in their social feeds. So that we can all speak, uh, sing from the same songbook uh, as as a chorus for change. So that's um, uh, we have uh, people from across the country. We have people in all fifty states who are who are trying to use their social media feeds to to spread messaging that's going to help our movement. So I have a question: um, If FTPA passes, we'll still need the John Lewis Voter Rights Act, and that is correct. So. Um, that what FTPA will do is to rectify and set a baseline um, for all 50 states about what, um, you know, level playing field. What the um, John Lewis Voting Rights Act will do is going forward, any other um, laws to change how elections are run in a state would have to be overseen and approved uh, by an independent pa uh, panel. So, um, that gets our historical problem and also our, our future issues. Yeah, and, um, and then we had a grad, we are thinking the final vote will be early in October. Um, so, cause there is a lot of other stuff coming up over the next few weeks that we'll get there. Um, and yes, we heard there is a provision to mitigate the Republican legislature's ability to overturn the results of the election. Um, you know, having somebody like Warnock in there was key fighting for that. Um, and so, yeah, we are hearing that that provision is in there and they've updated the John Lewis Voting Rights Act so that the formulation is on a rolling. It, only, it always only goes back 25 years to take away the SCOTUS ruling that it was outdated. So the formula will always be currently in date. So, so that will probably be more like end of October, November. That's not quite as much of a rush because most states don't start legislation until January. So One, one of the one of the benefits if they end up going with the the um, the democracy carve out for the filibuster, um, making it just a fifty one vote threshold. One of the benefits of that would be they could use they could use that same carve out to pass the John Lewis Voting Rights Act, um, and not have to go through the talking filibuster piece of it. But um, we'll just we'll see which way they end up going. And Murkowski has co signed on that already. So, okay, um, we ready to move on to the next topic? No. Um, so, I don't know if y'all noticed, but there was a little bill that got passed in Texas um, about the six week uh, heartbeat uh, bill banning abortions after six weeks. 
<laughs> and and Jamie is modeling our our beautiful um, uh, addition to our store. So if you go on to demcast.com slash uh, store, I think you'll be able to find um, our lots of lovely fun um, things. And we're always interested in to hear what you guys want us to put out and we'll be glad to add it to the store if you come up with something good. Um, so um, we, oh, you have a, you, you didn't stand up long enough. <laughs> oh, I'll model again. Productive freedom voter. Freedom voter. There she is. <laughs> All right. So, um, <clears throat> so of course there's been a big outrage uh, with this and, um, we're, we're, we, it's, it's a little bit like the dog who caught the car though, because the Republicans have used um, abortion as a way to drive people, one uh, ticket voters, you know, one issue voters to the polls. Well, if they manage to somehow actually prevent and pass legislation against abortion, number one, it pisses off a lot of women and we get really irate. And when you get a lot of um, irate women, it doesn't work out all that well. We put our pink hats on and we go march and, you know, it's not good. Um, and the other thing is that the, um, uh, it, it's very interesting to see that, you know how much coverage that Fox News has given the Texas law? zero. So they're not touting the success. Um, it's much better to have as a boogeyman than it is to have it actually done. Um, but that being said, we know that we need to get Roe v. Wade the right uh, to um, reproductive health care um, in the, the, our law, our federal law. And so it's really important, um, you know, that we have a focus on that. We have a bill that is coming up called the Women's Health Protection Act. We should see the, um, the bill come up for a vote this week in the House or next week in the House. Um, of course, then it would have to pass the Senate. So we know that's not going to happen for now. Um, but we will be launching a campaign um, around talking about reproductive freedom and reproductive health as well as pushing back on some of the, you know, misinformation and disinformation about abortion to help people talk um, in, in ways that make you feel like you know what you're talking about. Um, and hopefully that will help you guys. There's a Women's March, October 2nd, um, which is being held in various parts of the U.S. and, and including D.C. Um, so that um, you know, we will definitely be letting you guys know how to sign up for that and attend that if that's something you wish to do. Um, there are 48 Senate um, sponsors um, for the Senate, but um, the, the two that are the holdouts are Manchin and Bob Casey on the Democratic side. They're both um, pro-life. Um, and uh, you know, it's fine to lobby them to sign on, um, but it's much preferable uh, to, you know, push the push people like the Lisa Murkowski and the Susan Collins about why they aren't signing on. Um, you know, we we should be pushing on the the Republicans um, when they're not doing what we ask them to do. You know, or what's right. Um, harder than we lambast our side for not doing it. Yeah, and, the, and I wanna say Sanima actually made a comment that actually bodes well for the filibuster in her, which is nothing, she will not compromise on reproductive rights. That is a red line in the sand for her. Ooh. Um, and so, which of course Arizona went, um, okay, let's expand our coalition a little bit, which has greatly expanded in the last week. So um, just a little tidbit on that. Right. Um, so keep um, any questions about um, 
about that? I think it's just, I think it's really important that we, um, this is gonna be a really important issue for the 2022 midterms and probably the 2024 presidential. Um, and we have, to, we have to own it assertively. Um, Democrats are pro-reproductive freedom and we have to, it, yes, there are gonna be a couple of bit like Bob Casey or something like that, who people from Pennsylvania should absolutely uh, have their say with him. But for the most part, narratively, we need to, we need to make it really clear that, that, you know, if you, if women, if you want to have reproductive freedom, you have to stop electing Republicans because they want to control your bodies. And um, so we, that's, that's going to be a, that's going to have to be a consistent drumbeat um, moving forward. Absolutely. And it's a hard, I mean, I think it's a hard issue. And when I was working on the campaign where it's not ready yet, um, the whole my body, my choice, and I don't want to draw any false parallels between my right to, to whether I have a child or not, to my right to spread disease throughout my community by not wearing a mask, because those are two totally different things, right? One is about my life and one's about everybody else's life. So we have to be ready that we're going to get that, um, you know, pushback when we start talking about it. You know, well, if you get to control this, then I get to decide whether I want to wear a mask or not. And, you know, I'm not infecting other people with diseases by making my choices about my life. Um, so that's it's, it's a false uh, equivalency. But we want to prepare everybody with the tools to, to intelligently talk back about that. All right, um, Nick, you're up. Okay, so um, surprise, <laughs> because uh, everything just, it's a fire hose all the time. Tomorrow is the, um, is the California recall election finale. Of course, the, the election itself has been happening for quite some time uh, because in California, they mailed all the ballots to everybody, uh, but it's our last chance to get people to, uh, send them in so or drop them off at drop drop boxes so we will be doing a tweet storm social media storm tomorrow um it's on the calendar uh, and the link is there um and and jamie just dropped it in the in the chat um and uh it, it, we really would love everybody to jump in on this what no matter what state you're in um we all have california is a huge state we all have people in our networks who are from California or they know someone who's from California. So um, right. we just need to blanket, uh, blanket the, the social media with this messaging tomorrow. In particular um, is... <laughs> um, and the uh, question was, when do, they, when do we expect to have the results? Um, yeah, it's gonna be a while for California. I think depending on what the vote we're going to we're going to get a lot of data released very quickly um as soon as i think eight o'clock pacific is that right rolls around um and it could be that it's so just ridiculously lopsided that they're able to call it uh but the final results will will take quite a quite a while because of all of the um because it's because they do voting the right way in California and, and let, let people uh, mail their ballots in on the, on the last day and you know the, to get them all counted, that can take a while. So, um, but hopefully, you know, fingers crossed that, that uh, Democrats in, in the Golden State have uh, gotten scared enough that they, they, they uh, took out their pens and filled out the ballots and sent them in and we'll, and we'll know fairly quickly. And we, we have a section on there uh, combating the GOP lies because they're already using the 2020 playbook. It's rigged, even though, you know, Democrats outnumber Republicans in California two to one. So. And no, Omar, we can't ever trust polls again, ever, <laughs> ever. <laughs> so no, I... I I will. Ne I, I promised myself I would never ever be caught off guard by an election again. So I'm always preparing for the worst. 
Um, and yes, assume, use your time tomorrow, assuming that Larry Elder is gonna be the governor of California uh, next month and, and use your time wisely. <laughs> Contact everybody you know, make sure they're voting because uh, it would be a total disaster for California. And potentially the United States, uh, as he would have potentially the ability to replace Diane Feinstein, Di Diane Feinstein, if she's unable to complete her term at 88 years old. So uh, let's not let's not uh, flip flip the Senate with this one, shall we? Um, beyond the tweet, the recall tweet storm tomorrow, uh, we have a couple of big. Um, things on the horizon. Uh, the build back, what's being called the build back better bill, uh, because Democrats love, love alliteration, um, is, uh, is uh, the, the budget reconciliation bill. So this is the, the, the bill that they're preparing three, you've heard $3.5 trillion uh, package, which we should never, ever, ever say on on social media, don't talk about the price tag. That is the right wing's talking point. Talk about what's in the bill. Don't talk about the price tag. Uh, but the the reconciliation bill is um, is uh, going to be coming up, uh, and 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 they're going to be trying to get this through, uh, you know, in in fairly short order. Um, we don't know exactly where the negotiations are internally within the caucus on. How big or what what pieces of the bill need to be included? Um, you know, the every stuff on the table is uh, free uh, free community college, um, you know, universal pre K, uh, home care access for for all, for seniors and people with disabilities, um, and and basically like a a huge uh, array of safety net. Uh, programs that would really improve the lives of uh, Americans. I think what we want to be uh, messaging on this is what's in the bill, and then um, how we're going to how they're going to pay for it, which is by rolling back the Trump era tax cuts on uh, for billionaires and corporations. And um, and so basically, the Democrats are trying to um, uh, you know. Uh, help Americans thrive, everyday Americans thrive by asking the one percent and and uh, huge corporations to uh, pay their fair share. And um, so, again, as we're as we're learning what's in it, regardless of what the final package looks like and how big it is, maybe it'll just be two trillion. Uh, maybe it'll be, um, maybe it'll be three, maybe it'll be 2.9, maybe it'll be 1.5, but there will be a bill. Uh, and in the end, the Democrats will coalesce around it. Um, and, uh, and we just really need to stay away from talking about the price tag and talk about the content um, and, and all the good things that it's going to do for America because, uh, because these, these, uh, policies are hugely popular and insanely popular. And the idea of taxing uh, the rich to bring these things to fruition is insanely popular. Um, so we, we are in the driver's seat on this one if we don't uh, uh, pull out our, uh, pull off our, our usual circular firing squad <laughs> stuff that, that we do on the left. So, um, and yes, uh, some uh, some senators will be insanely annoying um, on this one, and we just have to make sure we're keeping the 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 frame in on our terms in, in the social media narrative. Um, and, and we also have to keep the government funded and raise the debt ceiling to just to make it a little bit more interesting this month. Yeah. Just a little bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So the debt ceiling. Uh, yes, that there is there is talk that uh, immigration uh, pathway to citizenship could be included in this. It, uh, it's a great 
it's a great thing to include because it's actually a budget uh, positive addition. It can actually help pay for the bill because uh, helping helping people become uh, become American citizens will uh, will actually add revenue, um, add tax revenue. It's actually um, not for citizenship. It's for green cards. Okay. Okay. Um, and it was it was sent to the parliamentarian last week. Okay. Thank you. But for that the green card is still that huge. Once you get the green card, it's such a huge step to be able to get your citizenship. It's a it's a pathway pathway to citizenship. But in in any but then you can become a a, ta a taxpayer, right? And that's that's the that's why it's that's why they're pushing for it to be potentially included in the um, in the budget reconciliation bill because it does have budget impacts. Um, because there are, are a lot of people who fall into that category. Um, and then yes, um, uh, the, the other looming thing uh, on the horizon is the debt ceiling fight. Um, so the debt ceiling, uh, raising the debt ceiling is something that Congress has to, has to do. It should be just a perfunctory thing that people, everybody just agrees to because ultimately what raising the debt ceiling means is um, uh, what raising the debt ceiling allows us to do is just pay our bills. It's about, it's about money that we've spent and money that we borrowed. It's not about what we want to do in the future. The, the right tries to make it this battle about, um, uh, about, uh, how much uh, the big government spending Democrats and they just want to they just want to lift the debt ceiling so they can just spend all the money they want but that is total bullshit <laughs> and uh, as usual uh, it's it's about paying our bills and and not uh, uh, defaulting on the debt that we owe to um, you know across uh, in the in the international space so uh, it can be a um, it can be a, a global catastrophe if the if the U.S. defaults and, and doesn't lift the debt debt ceiling. Um, whether or not this gets included in the bud budget reconciliation bill, we don't know yet. Um, uh, you can make an argument that that would be smart. You can make an argument you should do it separate. Um, but it, that is another thing that's coming. Um, and I think it has to be done by October, by middle or late October. Uh, I think is the is the yeah, it's September thirty first. Oh, is it September thirtieth? Okay. To keep so, the government open, because because you know, uh, September we just have to we just have to pile on. <laughs> so September is going to be a really interesting month, folks. Yeah. Um, so just keep an eye out for that. We'll try and we'll try and bring some real good. Uh, messaging around that messaging guidance and and toolkits and all that kind of stuff so that um so that you can help to fight the disinformation that's going to be that that entire fight is disinformation that is just that is the entire republican strategy on that um i guess that's their strategy on everything but in particular that one because it's totally a, a bs uh, issue that they're that they try and try and use as a political cudgel to get what they want so, um, Jamie. And then I don't know if you guys have all heard about the lovely little rally being planned Saturday um, to, from the right wing to protest the political imprisonment of the January 6th insurrectionists. Um, so, we really just need to make sure that we're amplifying what really happened on January 6th. Um, and we do not let them rewrite history. Um, you know, they're Taurus and all of, you know, all of the shit that they're saying. Um, so we're gonna do a social media campaign with just literally videos of that day to replay over and over and over again. So- Not tourists. There were not tourists. <laughs> terrorists I, yes so just something to um be aware of they're putting the fences back up around the capitol this weekend um and you know 
hopefully it's like the little Trump rally in what Kentucky last weekend that was supposed to have 10,000 and 300 showed up. I hope it's like that. So we'll see. Yeah, send us your videos, Ariel. Totally. All right. So um, we are still looking for um, expanded, like Nick was talking about, infrastructure. Um, we have been pushing a lot of the care infrastructure and why it's um, needed so desperately to enable people to return back to work, particularly women and women of color. Um, we, uh, for one thing, many of the caregivers are women of color. Um, and so we would like for um, them to be paid appropriately for all that they do and, um, and, and have appropriate rights as far as being able to have a, a unionize um, and be supported for home-based care. So um, that's, you, you may have seen um, quite a bit from us about that. And we're gonna continue to advocate for that because we feel like um, it's part of a economic justice um, package really from the Biden administration. Um, and so um, that, that'll be something that's coming up for later. Um, you know, we're not gonna get everything we want out of the budget. Um, uh, and the bill back better, um, but we're going to keep pushing to get every single thing we can that makes people's lives better. Um, and and we do it through the help of all of you. Um, it's just uh, amazing what um, what impact that that a group um, of people who are willing to spend just a little time uh, on social media can really change the the national narrative. Um, so, uh, you know, pat yourself on the back for this. This is real involvement and appreciate all of you who are texting and phone banking into California. Um, I think I'm gonna wrap this up um, unless Jamie, Nick, you have anything else? And then we'll, we'll have some question, time for questions if there's any questions. No, I think we've blabbered enough. Okay. Um, and like I said at the beginning, if you, if you joined in the middle, we definitely, um, you know, want to expand our presence into Facebook, and uh, we know that it's a little scarier to, to share things on, on Facebook than it is maybe um, on Twitter or other, you know, person to person. Um, but we we are going to be working on teaching people how to choose the people that they share things to. Um, and so, if you are on Facebook. Um, please um, search out and join our uh, Facebook group, which is Demcast USA. It's a, it's a public group. And that way, um, uh, anything that we share in there can also be shared out. So, um, and that, that's the, the plus of having a public group like that. And once you join us, please make sure you ask all your left-leaning friends to join us as well. Um, because we have a short period of time to really ramp up um, our, our Facebook presence in and, and time for 2022. And um, if you look at just the right wing spending on Facebook, it's vastly outpacing um, left leaning spending right now. So, um, yeah, we, we can't. Unfortunately, the the enemy is on the front lines at Facebook and we can't. Uh, just seed it to them because there's a lot of people who are on Facebook every day. It's like 70% of Americans get are on Facebook every day. So um, the name of the Facebook group is just Dimcast Space USA. It's a public group. You can uh, ask to join and we will be glad to admit you. All right. Um, so we have any questions? Um, I think Trudy had her um, hand up. Yes, I have never seeded Facebook, okay? And I try to educate these people, even several in my community and my twin sister who's a Trumper. I constantly try to give them data. I was just removed for the first time for a violation of community standards 
for a graphic of the 14 illnesses that have been eradicated by vaccines from the Santa Clara County Health Department and the CDC 14 diseases that are eradicated since vaccines. And it told me that it was because it was against their community standards. Now I, I went through their little, I disagree, which all was, uh, all I could say was I disagree. Mm -hmm. Now I put out a tweet over there on Twitter of the whole incident. So I would appreciate if you guys would all look at Trudy Gonzalez on Twitter and broaden that I've sent it to uh, a couple sure. people, somebody forwarded it to uh, Pelosi and a bunch of them. Mm -hmm. If they can't tell what's factual from reliable sources, news well, so let, let's, not. let me tell you what happened with that Trudy it's not that you violated Facebook's community standards it's that multiple people reported you as violating the community standards and um, we do have some back doors to Facebook so Trudy if you'll if you will later um, send message me what you're um, username on Facebook was, I'll pass that on. Oh, it's Trudy <laughs> Gonzalez. Okay. I'm, I'm Trudy Gonzalez everywhere. Okay. But I figured it was because multiple people complained. But mm -hmm. just because multiple co people complain, that doesn't make it non-truthful. And right. they should have a way, they should not do that. I've reused those things several times on Twitter. Mm -hmm. And I don't care how many times they could have reported on Twitter. Twitter's not going to remove facts. Mm -hmm. Well, that's not necessarily true either. Uh, people get mass reported on Twitter and they get, um, and they get. Well, they get shadow banned, but they well, don't. But more than that, we've actually oh. had people like lose their accounts and. and have, oh, wow. Um, yes. So. But, but, uh, but Facebook is way worse for sure. Facebook, oh, is, Facebook way worse. is way yeah. worse. Yeah. Thank so, you though for letting me vent. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and we, we do um, record these. And um, actually, you'll be able to go into our group and, and view this at any point because we have been streaming live to Facebook, to our new Facebook oh, group. I'm not um, sure we recorded, though. Uh, I think we can pull it from Facebook, actually. Okay. So, all oh. right. But yes, that's what we normally do is, is um, put it on YouTube, um, but it is on our Facebook, um, in our Facebook group today. All right. And yes, I, I hate... Facebook <laughs> and and Mark Zuckerberg, but now now that there's a Demcast group uh, where people are coalescing, I am going to make a concerted effort to spend some more time over there. So uh, I will. Nick knows we, how much I love Facebook. Oh yeah, oh we all favorite. do. It's our yeah. favorite. Yay. It really does feel like you're you're uh, sort of in the. Uh, Mordor or something like that you know it's just not not it's a uh, kind of an if place. any of anybody else is in a red state and you want all the republicans off your facebook page um be happy to get with you and tell you how i did it it's quite fun so and i have an alternate way to share information to only the people that you know want won't persecute you over sharing it so um we'll be sharing more about that later right Facebook is a horrible platform, but unfortunately, it's become a necessary evil. Right. Yep. Um, Jamie's, Jamie's tip is just to share until the people block her. Uh, oh, my, no, no. I posted a video of myself telling people if they had voted for a certain orange man that they could F off. Um, and they could block me first before I blocked them. So... <laughs> And apparently so that worked like, really well. I know where you all live. So <laughs> it worked wonders within an hour. They were all gone. Unfortunately, living in Tennessee, that was like 90% of the people that I was connected to. Uh, so I am um, Utah. Yeah, but. Is, anyway. is that going to be the, is that gonna be the 21st se century version of FU? It's going to be block you? Probably. Yes, maybe. Probably, yeah. So, all right. Any other questions? Uh -uh. I think we've got it all. Okay. All right. Um, so, oh, uh, we didn't. What we've I don't been think fighting we... for for the last eight months. We are right. this close to the finish line. It is. Yeah. This is a this is a really big month, folks. Um, I don't I don't think that we mentioned at the beginning that 
or acknowledge the fact that we moved the, this meeting to Mondays, which obvious, which is obvious for those of you who joined, and that now it's every other week uh, as opposed to every week. So, um, so mm -hmm. we will join you. We will be back here two weeks from today. Uh, uh, we will always reserve the right to to hold a an extra call if something big happens, and and we'll we'll always try and record those and send them around um, in case people can't make it. So. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. So see you in a couple of weeks and uh, be safe out there. Thanks Thank a lot. you all for your Thank you. Thank you. Have a good evening, everyone. Bye. Thank Bye. you.